Hello Internet, Taliesin here and today we are talking World of Warcraft Shadowlands and we are talking customization because the next WoW expansion promises us, the player, a whole new plane of existence to explore, covenants to join, new baddies to battle against, legendaries to forge, swolkin owl dudes to feel inferior next to because seriously bro, do you even lift though bro? Who needs leg day anyway? A new leveling system, class unpruning and a reported massive increase in the amount of customization options available to players when creating their in-game character. Which is awesome! Obviously, WoW has always been on the, uh, shall we say, the more limited end of the MMO spectrum when it comes to making your avatar unique and all your own. And whereas we're never going to see these sliders and colour droppers that some eastern entries into the genre give us, the brief glimpses of Shadowlands planned upgrades do look very exciting indeed. And yeah, there's the obvious stuff like the new human customizations, which at last give us representations of different types of human rather than just white people with different colour skin like we have now. This is clearly welcome and long overdue and if it means that Stormwind is basically just a wash with really hot Asian women from now on, which it definitely will be, well I'm okay with that too. Then there's the new Forsaken models with their uber edgelord goth new haircuts and more importantly bones which are under their actual skin though. Yes, again, really cool but not quite what we're talking about today because for me the real Really exciting new options that we saw at BlizzCon with the new dwarf and troll customizations. And that's not just because of how they look, but what they represent. And allow me to explain, because here's the thing about the races that you choose to play in World of Warcraft, okay? They are very specific examples of those races. When you choose a human character, you are very explicitly from Northshire Abbey. You are an Elwyn Forest human. You're not from Southshore or Theramore. I mean, no one's from Theramore anymore, but you get the point. When you start a Forsaken, character, you are very much a lorder on human who has been raised at a certain point in time. When you start a troll, you're very explicitly a dark spear troll. That's why Zandalari trolls have to be a whole different racial option. When you start a dwarf, you're very specifically a bronze beard dwarf. The whole starting zone is based around you being a bronze beard dwarf. You are not a dark iron dwarf. Again, that's why they have their own separate option with different starting experience. And you are not a wild hammer dwarf. That's the limitation that the starting areas in WoW place on your characters and their visual customizations. It's exactly why you can't give your dwarf cool wild hammer tattoos. Not because Blizzard couldn't be bothered to add them in, but because it wouldn't work with the starting zone. Except in Shadowlands, you can. In Shadowlands, it would seem that your dwarf is no longer restricted to being a bronze beard with their really truly terrible fake Scottish accent because with a simple tweak of a toggle in the character select screen, for the first time, they can become a whole different clan with the exact same truly terrible fake Scottish accent. Likewise, the trolls, who are no longer restricted to being of the Dark Spear clan, now having access to visual options which would appear to make them sand trolls and what look like they could be dark trolls, this, and I feel this can't be understood stated is a massive change in the whole ethos behind character creation in WoW. But how is it going to work? Because on the face of it, we still have the exact same problem. The troll starting area still refers to you as a young dark spear. The dwarf starting experience is still very much that of a bronze beard. How are we suddenly able to choose these clan hopping options and have them make sense from a lore perspective in a way that they never have previously? Well, there's one very elegant answer to that. The new leveling experience revamp, which is coming in Shadow Lands, and in particular the new universal starting island, Exiles Reach. This is the new starting experience which all new players will have to begin with and which returning players will have the choice of playing through or starting in their race's standard starting zone as usual. And it's designed to be a standardised introduction to the game and its fundamentals for the first 10 levels, introducing you to the various systems and mechanics of the game and climaxing in a group boss fight before then moving on to continue the rest of your levelling experience elsewhere. It's a neat idea from a gameplay point of view but more importantly for our purposes in this video Video, it also liberates new characters of being that very specific version of their race. A dwarf starting in Exile's Reach 
doesn't have to be a bronze beard, hence the new wild hammer options, which would have been impossible before. A new troll doesn't have to be a dark spear, hence our new sand troll and other variants. And suddenly, it opens up a whole new range of possibilities for loads of other races too. Because as Blizz said in the WoW Q&A, there are going to be loads of new options to play with. And in this video, we are going to look ahead at some of those possibilities. Possibilities that go beyond new haircuts or eye colours, and like the wild hammers and the sand troll, move into some far more significant territory. So join us as we present the Shadowlands customization options that we need and Blizzard would be fools not to give us, okay? Go, 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 go. Let's start with my favourite race in the entire game and the idea that prompted this video in the first place the Forsaken. Now obviously we've already had a glimpse at some of the visual delights that await undead players in Shadowlands and those misfits goth cuts and smooth new fresh from the morgue bods are definitely awesome. There's <laughs> No bones about it. But if we apply the same thinking that allows Wildhammer Dwarfs and Sand Trolls to our dusty cousins, then it suddenly gets a lot more exciting. Because if Forsaken characters no longer have to be specifically Lordaeron humans, then they can be anything. Canonically, Sylvanas is not shy about raising any old race into her ranks, which means that if Blizzard so desires, there is no reason that we couldn't see undead models for every other race in the game. And I know what you're thinking, that sounds like a massive undertaking and more work than any dev team would reasonably want to put into any one race's customization options, right? Well, maybe until you remember that there already are undead models for every race in the game already. They're called Death Knights, Karen, and they're already here. They're already in the game. They already exist, Karen. Death Knights! It would take the bare minimum of tweaking to allow Forsaken players to choose a raised version of any other race in the game when creating their new sallow bony or not bony boy, which would be cool enough by itself. But what more fitting expansion than Shadowlands to have it happen in? What more fitting way to show what is now the third age of the Forsaken since the departure of Sylvanas? Now here's another cool thing about this idea. Assuming the Forsaken stay an exclusively Horde race, and there's no reason to believe that they won't, how cool would it be that your undead horde character, who is very much a Forsaken, could actually be a raised dwarf? Or Draenei? Or oh, no! How weirdly awesome and satisfying would it be to make Alliance players have to see the undead versions of themselves fighting for the other side? Even just from a quest design and story development point of view, the possibilities are tantalizing and endless. And if you're not sold on this idea yet, well, sit tight. Because if we really are expanding Forsaken customization options to take in non-human variants, then that means we also finally get access to one particular long-awaited option suddenly Dark Rangers are on the table, fam. If your Fresh from the Grave Forsaken character can choose to be an undead Blood Elf rather than a Lorder on Human, then at a stroke, this most requested and longed for option is finally playable in-game. Players are happy, Blizzard are happy, because it would obviously make them a whole ton of money, and they love money! Everyone's happy. And yes, I'd make the Dark Ranger, and indeed all of the undead racial variants, customization options for Forsaken, rather than, say, each race having an undead version as one of their own customization options, because it's just neater and fits in the setup better. Forsaken in the game now are no longer human, they are Forsaken, and the exact same would be the case for Elves or Orcs or Taurans or Gnomes, except one. In the game right now, we also have new Forsaken Night Elves, who were raised after the Horde Assault of Darkshore and the Burning of Teldrassil. I would make these a customization option for Night Elf characters, rather than Forsaken. And here's why. In the lore right now, those undead Night Elves are working with Kalia Menethil and Derek Proudmoore to come to terms with their new flaky situation. And it seems to me like these particular long-eared zombie boys aren't going to make the move over to Horde at the end of their journey. Instead, rejoining the fight alongside their living Night Elf kin. We already have Night Warrior customization for Night Elves. A Forsaken version would be a really cool, if incredibly specific, addition to their visual canon. I love the idea. I want my uber pale Forsaken Night Elf Rangers. I want all this shit. Basically, what I'm saying is the Misfits haircuts are fine. They're cool. They're really edgy. But don't stop at the Misfits haircuts, okay, Blizz? And yes, we've talked quite a lot about Elves, haven't we? Well, we're not stopping there because... 
The new lack of fealty to a starting experience in Shadowlands means that the old rulebook is potentially being thrown out with elves too, which means that the door may finally be opened to another of the single most requested playable options in the entire history of the game, High Elves. These elusive blue-eyed brethren of the Blood Elves regularly top the polls in most longed for customization options. And with a new slew of choices in Shadowlands, it's hard to imagine Blizzard resisting the temptation to finally include them. But I want to go on record right now as saying, I really hope they don't. And the reason for that is, I don't think the inclusion of High Elves as a customization option is going to make anyone very happy. And especially not those people that desperately want playable High Elves. Because let's be honest, the easiest, most obvious way to enable High Elves in Shadowlands is just to give Blood Elves that blue-eyed option. That would be the most simple thing to do, and a route that backs up Ian Hazacostas' assertion that Blood Elves already are the High Elves that everyone keeps annoying him by asking for. But you and I know, well, okay, I know, and you do too if you've watched our pretty in-depth video on the subject, that when people ask for playable High Elves, they are very specifically asking for those dudes that never became Blood Elves in the first place, and can be found making their living on the blue side of the faction divide, to match their lovely glassy blue peepers. Basically, when people ask for High Elves, they very specifically mean Alliance High Elves. Being able to play a horde loyal Blood Elf with blue eyes isn't going to cut it for them. And if the Blood Elf High Elf does pop up as an option next expansion, it's going to cause more anger and betrayal among a certain part of the community than if they'd made High Elves a store mount. So that's what I think about that. But that doesn't mean there aren't some cool left field options that I'd like to see come Blood Elves way. How about San Lane? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The super emo vampire elves are a cult favourite among players, and after an offshoot of the race joined forces with the Horde in Battle for Azeroth, a plotline which, bizarrely, most Horde players never saw because it's part of the Alliance War campaign, it's perfectly feasible that some Dark Fallen stuck around in Ogrimmar just for the lols, and it would be a pretty simple customization option to add. They are essentially just undead colours again, which, again, is very fitting to be introduced in Shadowlands, I think. Who wouldn't want to run round Revendreth as a genuine, bona fide vampire elf with a tombstone strapped to your back? I know, I know, you're hardly thinking of those high elves at all now, are you? Although, I admit, a lot of these options have been pretty Horde-centric so far, so how about we swap sides for the next one, while still staying with our point eared cousins. The Worgen, who at the moment are tied to a pretty specific Gilneas starting experience. But of course in Shadowlands, where we have the option to skip all that shit, well it's a shame obviously because Gilneas is wonderful, obviously, but it does free us up to realise something that we've been keen on on this channel for a long time now, Night Elf Worgen. The Night Elves are, after all, the original Worgen, and it would be awesome to have them as an option when you create your very good toothy boy. Blizz wouldn't even have to create any new models for the non-wolfy forms, because, well, Oh, night elves already exist, and they could have as much or as little fun tweaking the wolf forms to make them more night elfy as they can be bothered to do. It would be a relatively simple job, it would be a really cool addition to the Worgen visual canon, and I promise to stop talking about elves now, I promise, thanks. If a new Draenei character no longer needs to be one of Velen's shipwreck lost in space hobos, then there's no reason not to include within the Draenei customization palette cool badass Eridar options. I mean, there kind of is a pretty good reason not to, I suppose, in that Eridar are certainly a legit variation of our round blue wonders, but you know, also universally evil corrupted bad guys hell bent on the destruction of their smurfy bros and also all other life on Azeroth. It's pretty hard to find a lore reason why an Eridar would want to fight for the Alliance, or why the Alliance would want them to beyond they look really cool, which granted is a compelling argument, but probably not quite enough in this particular case. It's just a little too jarring. Ah, oh, but they are cool though, and I mean, no! How about instead, we get a broken option for Draenei characters? These guys are plentiful on Argus and Outland, and okay, so it's entirely feasible that some could have joined the Draenei cause on one of our excursions to those places. There is one small problem here, in that currently there are only male broken models. Or at least, we assume there are only male broken models. You know, they are broken after all, who's to really say? But yeah, Blizzard could take the opportunity to add a whole new female broken concept, or they could just keep it as a male specific customization option. And honestly, that would be okay in my opinion. There's loads of gender locked options in the game already, like beards, unfortunately. And you know, it's totally fair because female Draenei get this cool headband thing, which the guys can't. So that's absolutely fair. That totally evens out broken Draenei for the boys, right? 
There's a few really obvious customization options that spring to mind that maybe don't merit a whole section to themselves in a video like this, but which would definitely be very welcome indeed in the Shadowlands revamps, like skinny Kul Tiran males. The reason these little Asmon gold looking mofos weren't part of the original Kul Tiran options is because there's no equivalent female option, but surely it'd be okay to sneak this body type into the options for guys in the next expansion. And how about Gil Goblins? If our diminutive green cousins are being freed from the specific confines of their island starting area, then the gates are open to these little amphibious gimps and there would be no finer time to include them as customization options while they are still relevant and fresh in our minds from our 8.2 adventures. Whack them in Blizz, let's all go goblin swimming. And since we're talking about very short people, let's get some leper gnome options on the table too. Okay, granted, the game isn't exactly lacking in gnome options and I get that, but who wouldn't want to play as a flaky disease looking gnome? Flaky looking disease gnome anyone? No? Okay. Well, let's, let's put that one on the back burner for now. Okay, let's talk trolls. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm going to come out and say that the path is now set in Shadowlands for a blood troll skin color option on top of the sand trolls and dark trolls. And, you know, I'm sure we'll probably get forest trolls and ice trolls in there by the time we're done. But again, much as I love their weirdly sexy bony look, even with my biggest lore blinkers on, I just can't level their total non-redemption in BFA and the fact that we all still kill each other on sight with any kind of world where they would be happy to join up with their horde buddies, much as I'd love it. So instead, I'm going to push for a troll skin option that I've always wanted because you see them everywhere in game big chunky berserker troll body types i love spindly jack skeleton trolls i really do but we've got bear humans and now it's time that we had bear trolls and that's just bear facts bears Demon Hunters have some of the coolest customization options in the game, but are the most limited class when it comes to race options. Currently, you are a Night Elf or a Blood Elf, or you are not a Demon Hunter, and that makes sense because as starting areas go, theirs is super specific. Like, you are literally one of Illidan's besties, you were at the Black Temple, you were frozen in snot for 10 years, but that was then, and this is now, and now we have a baller starting island to free us of such restrictive, um, awesome narrative. Look, what I'm saying is, it's 2020. The Legion is defeated, but not without first wreaking havoc on Azeroth in Legion. And I'm pretty sure that after such a bloody conflict, there are plenty of souls on this little planet who lost loved ones, homes, and saw everything that they held dear destroyed by the glowing green baddies and swore revenge. People from all corners of the planet, and importantly, all races. Yes, I'm saying now is the perfect time with the introduction of Exile's Reach and with the events of Legion so relatively fresh to allow other races to become demon hunters. Law-wise, it makes sense that a human or an orc or anyone else would have some serious beef with those remaining demons at this point and would therefore seek out training from the Illidari. And I see no reason, now that we're all buddies and guildmates, that the Illidari wouldn't be welcoming of them into their ranks. Look, they've already literally canonically accepted Murlocs into the Demon Hunter Brotherhood. They're not going to say no to a Tauren, okay? No one ever says no to a Tauren. Expanding the racial options for demon hunters represents a change in the status quo on Azeroth, but an understandable and realistic one. Plus, I can't be the only person here that can die happy once glowing tattooed pandas are double jumping their way to airborne slashy glory. And just to finish, let's stray even further from our stated objective in this video and address something that is a personal quest of mine. A bonus customization, if you will. Because if Shadowlands really is going to be a revolution in new ways to personalize our character, why stop with their skin tones or their haircuts or their tribes? Why not include their names? Yes, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, I posit that included in the new options next expansion should be two major changes to how names work. First of all, the allowal of at least one apostrophe in a character name. The fact that players can't use an apostrophe in their moniker when basically every other character on the entire planet can and does is crazy to me. From an RP point of view, it means that so many characters can't even follow the pretty basic naming conventions of their race. Letting us use one would just be in keeping with the way names work in this game and I'm pretty sure the technology must be there by now. And while we're here, let's think about maybe allowing second names. Because again, a whole lot of people on Azeroth have second names and it's actually starting to get really weird that we don't. I know WoW's thing at the beginning was to keep character creation in general on the simple side and I am a fan of that approach, but other top MMOs allow it without too much issue and maybe it's time that WoW did too. And I want to make this very clear 
clear. None of this is just so that I can recreate my excellent ESO character has been in WoW. But if Blizzard did take these ideas to heart, I can't guarantee that I wouldn't recreate him. That's all I'm saying. And there we have it. Some of the new customization options that we think Blizzard would be foolish, no, remiss not to include in the supposedly unprecedentedly awesome new Shadowlands updates. What do you think of our ideas? Are there any other obvious ones that we've left out? Is the entire thing being massively over-optimistic? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, don't don't thank us, thank our patrons who continue to make all of our work possible. Seriously guys, thank you, because without you, there would be a whole lot less Taliesin and Evertel. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is Nagura. No, my name is Taliesin from me and Evertel and the Nairin too. Until next time, cheerio. <laughs>